Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyy al-karim wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We begin by praying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Allah to send his peace and blessings upon the final prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all those who follow his way with righteousness until the end of time. But welcome to another virtual Jum'a khutbah for the third week in a row uh, as the country remains on level 3 lockdown and we try our best to stay in isolation to protect ourselves and others. We will continue to run these khutbahs from home online um, as a means of giving each other hope and giving each other some advice. And inshallah, soon we will be back together in our masjids with our communities as we all so dearly miss. So today's topic is focused on a few Islamic tips on how to overcome anxiety at times of of trial and calamity and I myself am not a psychologist so I can't focus too much on the psychology side of it and the uh, counseling related tips for dealing with this but our religion does give us guidelines on how to deal with such thoughts and it does give us certain acts of worships and du'as and dhikrs that can help us through difficult times and that's really going to be the focus of this so to begin the reason why I've chosen this topic is over the past few weeks there has been a increase in not just the number of people we know personally who have the virus but in the number of people we know personally who have passed away I myself know people my own age who I went to school with, who have passed away from this virus. And this is causing it to really hit home for a lot of people. Many people, you know, they complain to me and they say they can't sleep at night. They're scared of death. They're worried what's going to happen to their wife, their kids, what's going to happen to their family if they suddenly get the virus and pass away. The reality of death has hit home and it's not something we can push aside as we indulge in this dunya, not something we can ignore as we go out and engage in all kinds of sin. Rather, the warnings that have been there for many, many decades that death is a reality and any of us can go at any time. Now, more than ever, people are seeing this and people are waking up to this. And then the question then remains is, what do we do about this? So last week we spoke about the reality of death and how to come to term terms with it. And we spoke about some of the things we all should do, like making a will and setting up sources of continuous reward for ourselves. Uh, these are things we should do, asking people for forgiveness if we've harmed anyone. Today I want to focus more on the psychological side of it, which is how do we deal with these emotions? How do we deal with this fear and this panic that keeps us up at night? Many people are worried about getting sick. Many people are worried about dying. Many people are worried about their loved ones dying. Many people are worried about losing their jobs, losing their sources of income. We are living through a time of global tests and trials. And the reality is everybody... Everybody throughout their lives has faced trials. But for the most part, it's either been individual trials or localized trials. So as individuals, we may have to deal with the death of a loved one or losing a job or a health uh, problem. Uh, as a community, some communities have to deal with droughts, some with floods, some with wars. But something on a global scale that affects almost every home in the world, this is something that hasn't happened in decades. It hasn't happened in our lifetime. And so this has caused a lot of people to just completely lose their minds. I mean, you have people saying, what's the point in living if this world is going to be so full of trials and calamities and difficulties? And this comes from the idea that 
this world supposed to be fun this world supposed to be enjoyable this world supposed to be entertainment which is a false notion we have fed ourselves over the past few decades over the past few decades mankind has deluded itself into thinking that this world is a world of fun that this world is a world of entertainment that this world is a place to fulfill all of our desires while in reality Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us multiple times in the Quran that this world is a test and not only that but he promised to test us with exactly this Allah Taala says, I will definitely, definitely test you with fear, hunger, loss of life, loss of wealth, and loss of efforts, loss of fruit, right? Five things. The current pandemic is all five in one on a global scale. Fear. There is global fear which is what we are talking about today this anxiety this worry this fear that I'm going to die or my family is going to die or something bad is going to happen to us this is a test Allah promised us he promised us in this world we will go through phases of fear so when we do face such times we are told in Surah Al-Ahzab that the true believers say in such times that this is what Allah and His Messenger have promised. And Allah and His Messenger were true in their promise. Hunger. Not all of us have to deal with hunger. Alhamdulillah, many of us, myself included, we are safe from this. Allah has blessed us with good, pure sources of income. But during this past year, many people have lost their jobs. Many people have lost their businesses. Many people have fallen into poverty. And so they are dealing with the test of hunger. May Allah alleviate this for everyone who is in it and grant everyone prosperity in both worlds. Loss of lives. Everyone's faced this in the past year. And reality is this is something we've faced throughout our lives. It's just that the number we've had to deal with in a short period of time has been far more than what we are accustomed to. You know, maybe we lose a loved one once a year, once every two years, once every three years. But to lose, some families have lost four or five loved ones within a week before they are able to grieve one another one passes away this is a huge test may Allah give everybody strength loss of wealth we spoke about this people have lost their businesses you know I, I've, I took a drive yesterday through one of my favorite parts of town and at least six of my favorite stores were closed down during the lockdown they, they couldn't manage or survive the lockdown closed down gone people have lost their wealth what's Samarot? now Samarot technically refers to fruit because in those days the farmers used to rely on their annual crop uh, for their income and if there was a drought if there was a flood that's it they lost everything for the year and so this can be interpreted in our times to mean the fruit of our efforts that we are going to make efforts and we're not going to see anything in return a lot of people have seen that. A lot of people had invested in opportunities that were going to bloom in the year 2020 or in the year 2021. And because of what happened, it all fell apart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to test us. And what we see on a global level is simply the promise of Allah. So the believer doesn't lose faith when these things happen. He simply sees it as this is what dunya is meant to be. This is not meant to be Jannah. Jannah is where we have pleasure eternally. Jannah is where there is no fear, no death, no sickness, no old age, nothing. Jannah is where all our dreams and our desires come true. Dunya is the world of test. Dunya is the world of difficulty. Dunya is the world of trial. And generally, for each and every one of us, our trials are different, our tests are different, but at the moment, we all share one collective test. So what is the solution? The next verse says, or sorry, not the next verse, the verse before it. Right? The next verse uh, says that give glad tidings to those who are patient, those who say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi when a calamity occurs. But the verse I wanted to quote is actually two verses before that. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu sta'inu bi sabri wa salah. O you who believe, seek assistance through sabr and salah. These are our two primary weapons against anxiety at times of difficulty. When things go wrong, sabr. When things go wrong, salah. Really, salah and sabr should be there every step of the way our entire lives. These should be constants in our lives. We should be praying five times a day no matter how well we are doing, no matter how easy life is, it doesn't matter. That that's, should be a constant. And sabr in all of its forms should always be there. Whether it's restraining ourselves from evil or committing to go do good deeds or being patient with calamities, we should always have some type of sabr in our lives. But at times of difficulty, we have to increase. At times of difficulty, you have to pray extra salah. We have to have extra sabr. Why? Because this is where calmness comes from. If you look at the example of the hajjud, the qiyamul layl, this is one of the most calming things you can do. When you are facing stress and anxiety, when you can't sleep at night because you're worried what's going to happen to you during this pandemic, to wake up in the middle of the night, to perform wudu, to pray two rakah of salah, to pour your heart out to Allah in sajda, this is one of the best ways to calm your soul. This is one of the best ways to, to reduce your anxiety. And if you haven't tried it, try it tonight. If you're having difficulty sleeping because you are worried about everything that's going on in this world, and all of these calamities and all of these trials, wake up. And pray the Qiyamul Layl. And you will see it will have a huge impact on the way you feel. It will increase your tawakkul. It will incre increase your trust in Allah's Qadr. It will increase your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will calm your heart. Sabr. Knowing that life is a test and we are rewarded for having sabr with these tests should get us through the test. Now sabr doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Sabr doesn't mean we're going to be happy. Uh, sabr doesn't mean that everything's going to come right. Sabr simply means that we don't say anything that's displeasing to Allah. And we accept Allah's qadr and we try to move forward with our lives despite all the pain and trauma that we go through. This is sabr. You can still feel sad. You can still cry. You can still you know, have a few days to process what has happened so in Islam when someone passes away you have three days to, to mourn means to, to really sit there and, and, and process the, the entire thing before you, you have to force yourself to get back to work and get back to life so we're allowed to feel sad we're allowed to cry but our tongue should only say that which is pleasing to Allah so one of the ways in which we can deal with this anxiety is simply with accepting the reality of life which is that life is a test and this test includes losing those whom we love this test includes getting sick this test includes living through periods of intense fear in all of these if we have sober and sola Allah is there for us and it will count in our favor on the day of judgment when you accept the reality of life when you come to terms with the reality of this world being nothing more than one giant exam, this will help to calm the heart. Because the heart now understands what is happening around it. It's not random. It's not evil. It is simply a gateway to Jannah, if we have sabr. So we must face all of our tests in life with sabr and with salah. We remember the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he stated that amazing is the affair of the believer as nothing happens to him except that which is good for him. When a calamity occurs and he is patient, that is good for him. And when a blessing occurs and he is grateful, that is good for him. And that occurs only for the believer. And so we believe based on this hadith that everything that happens for to us is for us and is good for us. If it is a calamity, the sabr that we show with that calamity is good for us. And if it is a blessing, 
then the patient, the, 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 the shukr, the gratitude we have for that blessing is good for us. May Allah grant us all sabr. And may He replace what we lost with that which is better for us. And may He grant us all shukr and allow us to notice the good things in our lives and to remain grateful for all of these. Another method to help us deal with anxiety is zikr, the remembrance of Allah. And there are certain forms of zikr that calm the heart faster than others if you think about it. One of my favorites is the statement, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. But there is no will or ability, there is no power, there is no might except Allah's. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah essentially means that nothing happens except what Allah wants to happen. So when you are lying at night, feeling scared, worried about what if this happens, what if that happens, because we still have to deal with our re regular fears, right? In South Africa, we still have to deal with our fears of crime, we still have to deal with our fears of, of other illnesses, we still have to worry about, you know, the, the, the economy and all the other things that, that's wrong. But along with that, we now have to deal with the fear of, of, of COVID and, uh, and getting ill and losing our loved ones to this. So how do you deal with this? When that when an anxiety enters your heart, simply keep repeating la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And and reflect on this and think about this. Think about the fact only what Allah wills can happen. Only what Allah wills can happen. There is no power except Allah. There is no might besides Allah. There is no will besides Allah. Only qadr Allah is going to happen. The more you realize that everything is in the hands of Allah, the more calm your heart becomes and the more you trust Allah and the more you begin to just release that stress and that worry and leave it to Allah. That you are taking your precautions, you are doing what is necessary, now you leave everything else to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another form of zikr that can help us deal with anxiety is shukr, gratitude. And it may seem strange to recommend gratitude during a time of trial, but it works. It works for me. It will work for you as well. So this is what I do and this is what I recommend you to do as well. When you are feeling worried about all the tests in your life, take some time to sit and think about all the blessings in your life. So sit back and think, Alhamdulillah. And for every blessing, say Alhamdulillah. This is the important part. This is the, this is the zikr that comes from it. Sit back and think, Alhamdulillah. I am healthy. Alhamdulillah, I have Iman. Alhamdulillah, for whatever it is, and for each of us it's different. For some of us it's it's financial stability. For others it's a nice home. For others it's a good family. For some it's all of this. Whatever it is, I can guarantee you that during that time of contemplation, you will come up with at least 10, if not 100 things to say Alhamdulillah for. And as you focus on all the blessings in your life, and as you thank Allah for all the blessings in your life, you begin to worry less. You begin to obsess less about the what-ifs. And you begin to realize that just as Allah has blessed you with all of this, He is the one who is going to take care of you. He is the one who is going to help you through your difficulties. And He is only going to allow to happen to you that which is best for you. Another form of dhikr is <clears throat> not just the remembrance of Allah, but the remembrance of death. And this may seem strange. How would the remembrance of death help me overcome my anxiety? Well, the Prophet ﷺ told us to frequently remember death. And he told us to visit the graveyard so that we can remember death. And if you look at the dua we make when we enter the graveyard, we greet the people of the grave and we tell them soon we will be joining you. What does all of this mean? All of this means that we have to accept death as a reality. Death is not a bad thing. Death is not an evil. Death is not a punishment from Allah. Death is not Allah trying to harm you in any way. Death is simply the inevitable end of the current phase of the journey of our soul. We have to sit and contemplate and think about the fact that our souls were not created for this world. We are in this world for but the blink of an eye. And then we move on. 
the sooner we recognize that, the sooner we realize that, the sooner we realize that death is not something bad. If we die from an illness, it could be martyrdom, it could be an entrance into Jannah. Why is that a bad thing? So learn to embrace mortality, as we spoke about last week, as simply a fact of life and a necessary part of being on earth. The sooner we learn to embrace that, the better. The next thing we can do to help us deal with this anxiety is to make dua. And there are several duas in the Quran and Sunnah that can help us to overcome anxiety. One of the most basic ones that all of us should know is Hasbunallah wa ni'mal waqil. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal waqil. Allah is sufficient for us and He is the best of protectors. What more can you, can, can you ask for? Anytime you are feeling anxiety, remind yourself that Allah is sufficient for me and He is the best of protectors. Every time you feel anxiety, just keep repeating this until it goes away. Until the reality of this statement enters your heart. Allah is my protector. Only Allah can protect me. A stronger form of this found in Surah Tawbah, Allah is sufficient for me. In Him I place my tawakkul, in Him I place my trust, and He is the Lord of the mighty throne. Again, it's the same dua. Hasbunallah, hasbi Allah, it's the same dua. But this one here is more, it's more words in terms of, here yeah, you mentioned the words tawakkul, that I put my tawakkul in Allah. So if you're having difficulty, with tawakkul, this is the dua to make. And you remind yourself that Allah is the Lord of the Arsh azim What is Arsh azim It is the mighty throne. It is a Arsh that is bigger than this entire universe. Meaning that this universe is insignificant. It is really, really small. And it is easy for Allah to protect whatever is in this universe. And only He can protect it. And just as He is the Lord of the throne, He is the Lord of the universe. And just as He is the one who is in control of the throne, He is the one who is in control of the universe. So this should put some calmness into our hearts. Another dua that we can make is A'udhu Billahi min al-hammi wal husni. I seek Allah's protection from depression and anxiety. This is part of a longer dua found in the Sunnah where we seek Allah's protection from depression, anxiety, fear, uh, weakness, miserliness, debt, and being overpowered by people. And I highly recommend finding the full du'a, memorizing it and reciting it daily. But nonetheless, just for this part of when you are feeling agitated, when you are feeling depressed or anxious, A'udhu Billahi Min Al-Hammi Wal Husni. I seek Allah's protection from depression and anxiety. So this is a sunnah du'a. Right? Uh, another du'a that's from the sunnah that we can make is A'udhu Bi Kalimati Allahi Tamati Min Sharri Ma Khalaq. I seek Allah's protection. I seek protection in the complete word of Allah from anything evil that He created. So everything out there that we perceive as evil <clears throat> is a creation of Allah. And the only one that can protect us from it is Allah. So we seek Allah's protection from it. There are many more du'as like this. Again, I highly recommend that everyone should have a copy of Hisnul Muslim, The Fortress of the Believer. It's available as an app, it's available on the website, it's available in book form. Have a copy, memorize the du'as in there for, for, the, for stress, for anxiety, for morning and evening du'as. Make them part of our daily habit because these du'as go a, a long way for bringing about the protection of Allah and at the same time for calming our hearts because now we know Allah is protecting us. Du'as function on a variety of levels. On one hand, they bring about the protection of Allah. On another hand, they calm our hearts and they have a psychological impact on us. Another way is they work in dhikr. They remind us. We, we may not be thinking about the fact that Allah is Rabbul Arshil Azim. We may not be thinking about the fact that uh, Allah is the one in control of everything. But when you make these du'as, we are reminded of it. So it forms a, it, make, it takes on a form of dhikr as well. And most importantly, it's, it is a form of ibadah. In fact, in fact it is the greatest type of ibadah. It is the greatest type of ibadah. That this is the essence of ibadah, to make dua to Allah. At the end of this 
short discussion by reminding myself and yourself that one of the purposes of the test of life is to turn us back to Allah. And any test in this world that makes us more righteous, that makes us more connected to Allah, that makes us better Muslims, is not a calamity. It is a blessing. Anything that opens the doors towards Jannah is a blessing. Anything that leads down the path towards Allah and His love and His mercy and His compassion and His eternal paradise is a blessing. And so if this global event brings us all back to Allah, if this global event makes us all from those who are beloved to Allah, then it is the best thing that could ever happen to us. So let us face this with optimism. Let us face this with trust in Allah. Let us face this armed with sabr, shukr, salah, dhikr, and dua. And let us face this as believers, trusting completely in our Creator. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us. And he is the best of protectors. Remember to take your precautions, to social distance, to do whatever you can to avoid the sickness. Beyond that, it is Qadrullah. And whatever Allah wills is best for us. Subhanahu Rabbi Izzati Amma Yasifun. Wassalamun ala al mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rabiatu.